Okay, great. So we're going to get started here. Let me know if you can see the cues. And if people come in here late, they come in here late. I will let them in. Can everybody see the charts? Again, in order to ask a question, you go down to two, then you have to pick individual user, then you actually have to pick my name, Melissa Armo, okay? That's how you do it. All right, so let's get started. Today is actually a great day to do this lecture today, and I don't have any PowerPoint planned today. I'm just, I plan on speaking off the cuff, and then of course I got up this morning, saw the market gapping down this morning, and thought what a good day to do a lecture on trading gaps, and also trading on the side of institutional money. So again, I'm gonna just look at charts today and talk. I will answer questions that you have. If you have questions, you can plop them in the room, but I don't have a pre-planned PowerPoint to go over today because I wanted to just use charts and just talk about gaps and talk about institutional money and really what I do. And the whole point of today is for anyone to come and ask questions if you think you might be interested in trading options with me or day trading with me or taking the class and learning what I know. And again, some of you are new to the stock swoosh. Some of you, I recognize that you've been following me for quite a long time, some of you for a very long time. Um, and again, this is a discussion today really on gaps, but it's also on institutional money, which does what? It buys and sells stocks in the market, okay? So this is a very interesting time right now, I think, to trade, particularly because a lot of people are convinced more than anything in the world that the market has made the low for the year on June 16th. In fact, let me blow this up. Can everybody see the chart? This is a daily chart of the QQQs. So everyone is convinced that June 16th was the low of the year, and it very well might be. Maybe it is, okay? That doesn't concern me at this juncture because I'm an active trader. And if you want to come and you want to learn what I know and you want to trade with me, you'll become an active trader too. What do I mean by active? I mean we're trading not only gaps, but we're really trading momentum. Okay, momentum. We could be trading momentum in the, in, in the case of shorting or doing a put, which is an option that's a short, or we could be going long or doing a call, which is, an, is a long option, where we are trading momentum to the upside. Okay, so we're gonna look at a bullish gap today, we're gonna look at a bearish gap today, so we can see the difference between trading on the side of institutional money to the upside and to the downside, okay? And again, any questions for those of you that came in late, you go down to the two button, choose individual user, and then you choose my name if you have a question, okay? But anyways, getting back to the market. So a lot of people are convinced that June 16th is a market lows. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If you're an active trader, you shouldn't be worried about that. Now, if you have money in a retirement account, you might be worried about that. You might be worried about that because you may be long the market in some things or some stocks and you don't want the market to fall off any further for this year. And we have fallen off since the beginning and trending down since the beginning of 2022. In fact, it feels like a really long time ago but if you go back and look, January, let's find the first day of the year here, January 3rd was here. In fact, January 4th was here. January 4th number, and again, I'm on the queues. We could look at the SPY, it's neither here nor there. Charts are very similar, but the high for the year in the queues was 402.28. That's a long way from where we are today, as you can see. So. You know, if you become an active trader, the whole idea and the whole purpose of trading is to actively pull money out of the market on a regular basis. Could be in a couple of minutes if it's a day trade, could be a couple of hours or a couple of days if it's an option. But that's the whole point of being active in the market is to pull money. And I call it chunking it out. You chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. But in order to chunk it out, you have to have big moves. Not only do you need big moves in order to make money, 
on a consistent basis, week over week, month over month, you also need big moves, what? To cover your losses when you have a loss in something because everyone has losses. I have losses, all right? I will say that we've had a very good month this month of August. We only had one losing day in the trading room this month of August, which was last Thursday. We've made money every day other than that. So August has been an extremely good month, but there are trades that I do that lose. So you want big moves in the stocks that you trade in the market if you're trading it, which we did trade the market today. We shorted the market today. That's what we did. That was a day trade, and we did options in the market as well. But you've got to have big moves to have gains, number one. And number two, to have gains that will also cover your losses too, okay? Because you are going to have some trades that lose. Now, I use stops. We can talk about that more later. Um, and I see some people just signing in now. If Just to review, if you have a question, you go down to two at the bottom of the chat box. Choose individual user and my name if you have a question, okay? So let's talk about institutional money. Before we talk about today's gap in the market, let's talk about institutional money to the upside. So the whole purpose of making money as one person, whatever your account size is, could be small, could be medium, could be large. Again, how much money you make in a trade depends on your position sizing and the pick, okay? So the pick is, I look for a daily pick that's gonna have a big move. So the whole idea, again, of, of trading is to get the pick right. If you have a good pick, whether you take 100 shares in something or one contract or 1,000 shares of something, okay, you will make money no matter, no matter what your account size is, okay? So again, if you take bigger size, you're gonna make more money. But if you have a bad pick, even if you take big size, you're not going to make money, you're going to lose. And you could lose a lot if you have a bad pick. Okay, what do I mean by bad pick? I mean you get the direction wrong for one thing, or you have something that doesn't move that much. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down, it wiggles and jiggles and flatlines and basically doesn't have any movement or momentum at all. The pick is whatever stock we're doing. Could be the market, could be an ETF. We do do the market ETFs, and by ETF, I mean the QQQs, the SPY. Sometimes we trade the diamonds. And by pick, I mean the stock pick, okay? So let's look at CVS. This is a daily chart of CVS. First, we're gonna talk about institutional money. What is institutional money, what do I mean? I mean hedge fund money, big professional money, big money in the market, money that's big, 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 that can move a stock. That can move a stock when it buys the stock, that can move a stock when it sells a stock or the market, okay? So it's so big that it actually will move it. In the getting in or the getting out, it will move it, okay? So of course, anything like that would constitute what? Would definitely have to have volume, all right? Now, CVS is a company that you know. There's probably a CVS somewhere near you. So CVS is, uh, CVS, I should say. CVS is a company that sells products. It's a pharmacy. And we all know what they are. So CVS is a heavily traded stock, and it also has big moves, okay? So on this particular day, this was 8-3. The stock had a big move what? It had a big move up. You see the square at the top on the left-hand side at the black box, okay? So the low for the day was 97.72. The high was what? 101.88. So it opened at 98.05, rallied, went all the way up, closed at 101.38, not far off the highs. So what would you have wanted to do to make money on that day? Go long or do a call, okay? So again, this got bought with institutional money. So again, the play in this is a long. Again, getting back to the pick, the pick is to find CVS and say this is a good what? Long, and to do it as quick as you can. We get in early. Because obviously if you're getting in here at 100, I mean, you know, 85% of the trade is over in the day. Now let's go back to also talking about gaps. And again, some of you have been following me for a while, some of you are new. What is a gap? 
A gap is the difference between the close and the open. That's it. It's very simple. Finding the right gap to trade each day or finding the pick is not simple if, unless you know what to do, all right? So this closed here at 95.37. This opened here at what? 98.05. So this closed here gapped up. Again, it could have gapped down, but in this particular case here, it gapped up, and I saw the gap. So if you decide and you want to come learn how I make the picks, you learn how I made this pick. How did I find CVS and know that CVS would be a long? And I use a rating system to determine that, and I do all of that in the pre-market. The pre-market, meaning any time before 9.30. I could do it at 7 o'clock in the morning. I could do it at 8 o'clock in the morning. I could do it at 9.15, right before the open. I could do it at 5 a.m. when I get up. The whole idea for me for trading is to find the best pick before the open. Again, because after the open, it's way too late. And sometimes what happens is something makes a big, 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 big move out of the gate right away is in the first half hour of the day. And if you don't get in early, well, you've missed a lot of the move. And if you're doing an option, for example, you'll pay a way higher price if you're waiting till 10 o'clock, 10.30, 11 o'clock to take, to take it, okay? And then you either, what, only make a little bit or you will have to hold it if it's an option, for example, for days to get the move. Now, one of the reasons that CBS is a good example here is because not only did it have a big move on the day, bullish, okay, like again, it got bought with institutional money, it also kept going. So this really is a great example here which shows you the power of institutional money and the power of the gap to take it up. This almost went vertical up. And I just wanna show you here, the previous high in CBS was back here earlier this year 111.25 when this ran up again this was earnings by the way when it ran up here 816 it was at 107.26 it wasn't that far off the high and that that two week period a couple of days after the earnings if this with the market hadn't fallen and dropped off in the last couple of days this probably would have kept going but again everything's affected by the market even bullish stocks will be affected by the market on down days in the market which we saw today and we also saw Friday, okay? And again, any questions, you can write it in the room. But anyways, this is a great chart. This is actually stronger than the overall market, okay? So institutional money is buying CVS. How do I know? The stock price has been moving higher. Now, it didn't get bought today, okay? And again, these are little moves or baby moves compared to this move this is the move you want to get this is the big one and whether you got out here at the end of the day or held it into the next day or whatever you're you're, you're up as long as you did the direction right as long as you went long now i get this question a lot you know basically people ask me about gap fills Gap fills do not work consistently to make money. However, there are some gaps that quote unquote, you could say fill the gap or whatever. That's not how I describe them or how I would describe them. But anyways, my rating system accounts for that, only looking for gaps that will follow through in the direction of that gap. So if something rates poor per my 26 point rating system, if it doesn't rate good, then I'm not gonna do it. In the case, in the case then, for example, it may reverse, which is not what I wanna see, and I'm not playing that even if it does. Okay, does that make sense? Anyways, this is an example of a bullish move where the stock is bought with institutional money. It's set up in the gap up, and it followed through very nicely, and it's a good chart, okay? So that is, or was, CBS. Now, let me look here at another one. Um, hold on one second. I'm just trying to see. We could do the market. There's something else I was going to do. What the heck did we do last week? Market. Let me look at IBM. Let's look at this one. Okay, can everybody see this? This is IBM. I 
I have the daily chart of IBM up. Can everybody see that? So again, we want to show you institutional money. You want to be with institutional money. In this case here, I'm going back to, this is October of last year. Again, IBM, take it up, had a gap. This was a gap down. Stock closed here at 141.90, open here in the morning. This was the morning of 1021, okay, at 133.51. So here's where the close was, here's where the open was. So we shorted this and it worked. What happened? The stock sold off. High of the day was 133.72, low was 128.10, okay. This is a big move for IBM. Again, it has volume. Down here's the volume, fell. So what happened here? Institutional money sold IBM. And maybe some people even shorted IBM. Remember, hedge funds can short. Professional traders can short. So you had a sell-off in that. Big fat red bar. Again, you could have done a put. And this fell and continued down here. Jerry's asking, did we do any trades today? Yes, we shorted the QQQs in the day trade room live. And we did a bunch of puts, actually, that were with the market for options. We, there was a, quite a few options trades today. And again, right now, what is it? We have less than, what is Memorial Day is in two weeks. Next Monday is the 29th. The following Monday is September 5th. So we have two weeks, less than two weeks, tomorrow morning to Tuesday, until Labor Day, and that's it. The summer is over, and the market's closed on Monday, September 5th. So after that, fall trading begins. But I will tell you that to have the type of volatility we saw today in the market and the things that are on top for the next week even, to have the, all of this stuff going on that's happening right now, it's very interesting because to see this type of trading in the month of August, again, it's a precursor for, for what's gonna come up, I think, for the fall, which is gonna be a very active trading time. Okay, getting back to this. Again, IBM depicted what? Selling, selling action. So you had institutional selling. You had a big fat red bar to the downside. You had selling pressure, and then you had some shorts. Okay, so we, as active traders, shorted it. And again, the earlier you're in, the better. Of course, you got to get the pick right. Could this have reversed and filled the gap? Yes. Did it do it? No. Why? It rated per my system over 20 points per the 26-point system. So I knew it would drop. I was correct, and it fell. So again, you can't short every down gap, just like you can't go long every up gap. You have to pick the good ones. And again, it's all about the pick, and it's finding the right pick, okay? Now let me go back here to this. And again, any questions, you go down to where there's the two, then you drop down to individual user, then you pick a name and you type a question, okay? I was just gonna say something here, I was gonna forget. Oh, we were talking about this trading period, what's happening right now in the world and everything else like that. So again, I don't make trading decisions based on fundamentals. I make trading decisions based on the gap. My reason for shorting something like the market today is because it gapped down. It rated per my system to short that it would fall through in the gap where it opened, which it did. We opened today at 318, low today was 313.53. That was a nice move for the market. But also, if you love fundamentals, if you like fundamentals, if that's your thing, if you need that to get confidence and conviction to trade, there are plenty of things that you could look at to give you the fundamental basis to want to have shorted the market, for example, today or Friday. We did the market Friday too. It worked. But the reality is if you need fundamentals, it's that that's something that you need, you've had it the last 24 to 48 hours, quite frankly. You don't have it all the time, all right? Price action and looking at what's happening in the gap is more important supersedes everything else. Why? Because it's telling you what's happening right now. And a lot of times the fundamental, especially earnings 
or especially some of these economic reports come out, all those things are already reflected in the in the in, in whatever the stock is doing or whatever the market's doing anyways. Sometimes it is things in immediate time. Okay, part of the reason we were down this morning over the weekend was there's some things going on that are coming up this week with Russia and Ukraine that people are scared about what could happen and then there was the bombing over the weekend so sometimes there is immediate news that happens that affects the market sometimes it's good sometimes it's bad but sometimes okay there's fundamental things that happen that really are already built in that people are expecting okay that big traders are expecting hedge funds whatever that read these research reports that it's already reflected and if you're making decisions based solely on fundamentals you may be missing out on current price action and real moves that are happening right now, which is all that matters to you because why? You have to make money today. Again, getting back to what I was saying, if you want to become an active trader, that is what we do. Active means you're trying to make money right now, today, tomorrow, this week. Again, could be an option, could be whatever. But part of the benefit, I think, of trading gaps is that well, if you can find a good gap that is that is being bought by institutions or sold off or shorted by institutions, you have an opportunity to make a lot of money, not just with the day trades because of the big moves like we saw here in the market today, but also in overnights and options. When you take an options trade, you have a fixed risk. It's like the insurance. You can't lose any more than you have at risk. If you take, you know, a thousand dollar risk in a trade, for example, if the trade flips totally upside down in the opposite direction that you're in, you can only lose a thousand dollars. That's it. If it expires worthless, that's it. You can't lose any more than that. Versus if you are in a day trade, I use a stop. If I get stopped, it's a limit order stop. I if I risk a thousand dollars, I then I lose a thousand. Sometimes I have a little slippage, but for the most part, I get filled in my stops and then I lose whatever I had at risk, okay? When you're doing a swing trade though, when you're doing that, okay, you have essentially unlimited risk because your position could move against you in the trade, in the swing trade, and it could you could be a, have unlimited risk. In other, in other words, if, it, if you spent $5,000 you know, to take the position, and you said, well, I'm gonna put my stop here at 2,500, I'm gonna kill it there. Well, you may not have time to do that, why? Because it could go against you overnight the full amount, and you could have every intention of killing it in a theoretical stop at some point, but it goes against you overnight so much that you can't, and then you lose more than you wanted to lose, okay? And that's where people get margin calls, for example, in their accounts, and sometimes the broker then will take you out of the position or you have a margin call where you have to send money i'm talking about in swing trades it doesn't happen with options you have to have the cash there in full to take the options straight okay and again any questions let me know now we i called trains this morning really early i'll show you the i'll pull up the earliest options trade i called this morning but the options trades I called this morning, Jerry, weren't the best trades that I called. The best trades I called in options, guess what? It was Friday morning. Friday morning in the pre-market. And everybody that held the options that I called Friday morning in the pre-market that expired this Friday that are still in play. Everybody that did those trades was up huge when this morning. One of the benefits of trading with me, and particularly one of the advantages of being on the options newsletter is I'm very good at looking at directional bias of the market, and we get in trades so early that if you can hold them and get the overnight moves, which people did from Friday to Monday morning, they were so far through the strike this morning, we did puts on Friday, you couldn't have screwed the trade up. They were up more into the close, they'll be up more in if they we fall tomorrow, but the reality is getting overnight moves and options is what makes some of these trades be four or five, six hundred percent that I call. You could have got out of the trade Friday. I know some people did because they told me that they did. But the reality is everybody is managing their accounts differently because some people have criteria where they have to, you know, they have a small account and they can only do so many trades in this many days or whatever, you know people have to follow the rules of whatever broker that they're at 
And then also some people, again, want to book money quickly, so they get out of everything by the end of the day by four, whatever they're up. They don't look at targets, they don't look at return on investments, they get nervous. You could say the market's been choppy for the last couple of months. It hasn't been to me. We really haven't been playing the market. We've, I've been doing, I've been really, I've done a great job here and I'm gonna give myself all the credit in the world. In the last couple of weeks since the market was rallying, we did not go long, I didn't see it. Theoretically, could we have gone long in the market? Yes. Did I wanna do it? No. Did I think we would continue higher? No. And that was that. So the reality is we did specific earnings trades and we did gaps that were earnings and we made money in those. So I really backed off the market when I saw what was happening. But the reality is we did not back off in the last 24 to 48 hours. We did stuff Friday, we did stuff today, it worked. So, you know, looking and reading market direction helps you make a decision for other trades that you may take. Today we did power trend down, we opened, fell, dropped, closed at near the lows. That is a power trend day. If we had fallen all day and we closed at nine o'clock tonight, we would have fell even more. Where we go tomorrow morning, it's too early to say, but the fact is that getting in early, which was not this morning, it was Friday, was the right thing to do. And that is what we did. And it was a very profitable move. I do not do trades in the pre and post market. I'm analyzing trades in the pre and post market. You can do swing trades in the pre and post market, but you can't do options except for you can do the market 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after the close. So you could do the ETFs in the market in an options 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after. I don't, but you could. But you can't trade something like CVS at 9.25, no. So you can only do that with the QQQs and the SPY, and I don't, and I wait for the open anyways. But swing trades you could do position-wise, and then you'd be on cash or two-to-one margin. And of course, we don't do day trades until in between 9.30 and 4.00 but you can't do options at seven o'clock in the morning, but you would have it all ready to go and know that you want to do and everything that you want to do ahead of time. Um, let me just take this off. I'll tell you the strike I called on Friday. Or the time, the time and the strike. 9.05 on Friday morning, I called the 325 cues. So you can see what it did. So I sent in a half an hour before the open, drop, fell, boom, open this morning, where? A 318.50. And then it fell today, you know. So I always think the best thing for people to do in reference to options trading is, particularly if I call several trades in one day, which I did Friday and I did today, you don't have to hold everything. If you're new and you haven't done my class, you probably shouldn't hold everything. You should be booking money all along the way, or if you have a small account. If you know what to do and you did the class and you feel comfortable holding, you can, but if you do a spy in a queue and you say, I'm gonna hold a spy and I'm gonna get out of the queue, you could do that or vice versa. Or you do two contracts and you get out of one and hold the other one or something like that, okay? You can hold everything to a piggy target unless you're really good at what you do, which I am. But for anybody that's new or if you haven't done the class and you just want to get the trades in the options newsletter, you should just be normal and you should be booking money along the way. Don't hold everything to piggies. It's not the right thing to do. And the trades that we were doing, most of the trades in the last few weeks, again, were not market related. Were not market related. They were trades that we were doing, particular trades like we did CBS. We did CBS, we did a couple other longs. I can't think of them right now off the top of my head, but we did we did other things. Oh, we did this. We did the CBX. This was a long. We did this here. Again, stock close to your gapped up, boom. We did calls, get in, get out, boom, done. Boom. Again, what is this? Institutional buying. Take it, you get in, you get out, boom. You chunk it, you chunk it out. Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. So again, trading is momentum trading that I do with, with options. Momentum, momentum, momentum. So everybody, like I, I had a head on, I was on CBS at four, 
But I had the TV on earlier when I was getting ready. And this morning, like, everybody was, you know, by the pullback. And you've been hearing that for weeks, you know. You can't buy every pullback in the market and expect to make money. And if you did that this year, you're getting clobbered. Now, theoretically, if you did that in the last month and a half, did you make money? Yes. But again, that's not a strategy. It is to a lot of people. It isn't to me. A strategy is you are going to look for this particular, particular, particular thing. And when you see it, you will trade it. And when you don't see it, you will not trade it. Okay. So there are some days where I don't do any options at all. There are some days I do no day trades at all. Why? I don't get the particular things that I'm looking at, and so therefore I don't do it at all. I don't do anything, okay? So buying pullbacks and shorting resistance, which people do, so there are some people that have a bearish bias to this market. They are shorting resistance levels, okay? and they think that's a strategy. It isn't. There's multiple supports in the market. There's multiple resistance levels in the market. So how do you know at any given point in time which one's gonna hold? And also they don't always result in large momentum moves like we saw today in the market, like we saw Friday. And obviously if you held the options from Friday down into today, you got the bigger, the bigger move. But you know, buying pullbacks and shorting resistance is not a strategy, in my opinion. To me, a strategy is looking for a particular, particular, particular set of criteria, very honed in and looking at that. And when you find it, you play it and you play it with 100 percent conviction. You're all in 100 percent conviction, all in, all in, all in, all in, all in. So one reason why I didn't get out of the trades from Friday, I'm talking about the options, even though it can be you know, chancy to hold anything over a weekend is that I knew the queues were gonna break 320. We could have done that Friday, but we didn't. So I felt very confident 320 was a number we were gonna to get to if we didn't break it. We did not get to that number on Friday, so I held the trades. We broke it today in the morning in the pre-market. It broke it here this morning. This is all in the morning here. That's four o'clock in the morning. So four o'clock in the morning, if you rolled out of bed, the market was selling off and it, and it just based out and fell. And that was the, this is the whole day. So this is the pre-market. So if I got up at four, I didn't, I would have seen that we were lower. Actually, the futures were down last night. I didn't really pay attention to where we were down, but we were down last night on Sunday night. So again, getting back to what I was saying about fundamentals and technicals, technicals will always tell you what to do. The fundamentals can support the technicals at many places. Today was the case on Friday as well. What happens tomorrow or Wednesday or Thursday or Friday with the Fed meeting, nobody knows. But sometimes they match up. But what about if they don't? You're better off going with the technicals because if you go with the technicals and you're reading the price action and you're seeing the selling and the buying, then you know that that is real and that's what's actually happening. Whereas the fundamentals sometimes, whatever they're saying or could say, sometimes doesn't match up. Sometimes it's already built into the price. I mean, you know, I'm fully expecting on the weekend, it's Friday and Saturday is the, the Fed meeting. I mean, the Fed could come and say, everything's fine. We're going to be back down to 2% in you know, inflation by the end of the year, everything's great, everything's fine. They're ready. They've been saying that for the last however many meetings. Everything's great, everything's fine. Well, if you're a consumer, you know that's not true. You know the real rate of inflation is not whatever they last said. What did they say? It was 9% or whatever, whatever the last number they said. You know that's absurd. You know, you know that isn't true. They take all the numbers of different food products, for example, and they take gas and they take housing and they take a million things and they average them together. So you could have an opinion on something or the people that talk and make all the decisions could have an opinion to train off of that isn't helpful all the time and sometimes can hurt you. And I think that we saw a lot of buying, you know, all this stuff in here. Part of it was they passed that stimulus so people said, oh, this is great. I don't think it's great. I think it's terrible. It's going to make the problems worse. But anyways, you might have thought it was great and went long. 
Did I think there was a good trade? No. If you went long and got out at the right place, would you make money? Yes. You know? So it's kind of like making a decision on something that isn't based on the number and the numbers really is all that really counts because at the end of the day, that's how you're gonna make money. You only make money when you're long something that's moving higher and you only make money when you're short something that's moving lower. You're not gonna make money going long something that's moving lower where the price is moving lower, if that makes any sense. Like if you won long the market today, you lost. Period, full stop, end of story, we powder trended all day, into the close, you lost today, that's it, you know? Does anybody understand what I'm saying or have any other questions here? So again, I don't predict the gap itself. I don't know where we're, the market and the QQQs is gonna gap tomorrow. We could gap up, we could gap down, we could gap anywhere. I'm not predicting the gap. I'm seeing the gap in live time when I roll out of bed, just like I showed you at 4 a.m. this morning. So I will see the gap tomorrow. Then I will know what to do based on reading it and make a determination then, okay? I day trade on the one minute chart, but I rate the gap in the daily. The one minute chart I can day trade on and we're in and out five to minutes, 10 minutes, really, really super duper quick. So today we did the cues as far as the day train. Take this off here and show you what we did today. And we don't, tr we don't day trade the market every day. And I don't do options in the market every day. Today, setups were there. So we shorted the market, got the drop, some people got out. Shorted the market, held it a little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit, squeezed a little more out of it. If you held it all the way down in here, you squeezed even more. And if you held it all day, the best exit, which I did not get, was like 313 something. I was out of it by then because I was only, I like to trade the morning and day trades. Looks like it was right around here, 313.84 if you held it all day. That was a great call this morning. It was a great call Friday. We did the market Friday too, because it was there. Here it was Friday, boom. Again, that's momentum, people. In this particular case, again, this was a short. I do prefer to short. Why do I prefer to short? Although I go long. CVS was a great long, fabulous long, worked good, so was CVX. I prefer to short, though, because downside moves go really, really quickly. And a lot of people don't know how to short, so they just don't know how to do it. So if you know how to do it, you're kind of like putting yourself ahead of the pack as far as success rate goes. When you get big moves to the downside, when selling comes in, they also happen very fast and very quick, which you saw in the last 24 hours. And also a lot of retail traders have no idea how to short and they just are scared of shorting and they just won't do it. It gives you an edge if you know how to short and anything that you can do to give you an edge above everybody else is going to help you Anything you can do to give you an edge at all in life is going to help you. If someone said to you, there's a secret sale, uh, there's a secret sale at this grocery store, it's a midnight madness sale. If you go tonight from midnight to 2 a.m. in the morning, it's a secret sale, you can get 50% off all your groceries. Would you show up? Of course you would. The cost of food right now is nuts. I mean, I just... I was going to order something Sunday, and then I filled my cart, and then I'm like, okay, I started adding stuff, adding stuff, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm getting back to hoarding. And then I didn't even place an order. And now all day today, I'm like, am I really going to start hoarding stuff again? Because I mean, the way, look at what, the, China came out today and said their GDP growth is down. They're producing less. You look at all the supply chain issues. You know if you buy something you use a lot today, chances are it's gonna be worth more in two months, it's gonna cost more. I'm like, and it's very difficult in New York to hoard stuff because you know I, I live in an apartment, I don't have a 
garage to store stuff or a storage place. And, and and I'm feeling like I I'm, I need to hoard again. And that's crazy. But this is, you know, this is where it's at. It's like, again, if someone told you private information about going to a sale at midnight and get a half off your groceries and everything you need, you'd go. So it's like a secret, secret thing. If you have an edge that you know how to do something that a lot of people don't, it's like private information that you can use to benefit you to trade and make decisions and do well. And I kind of feel like the room is like that because... I told people last week in the room on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and every day last week, I said, the market's going to fall between now and Friday. I don't know when, but I know that it will. It fell Friday. <laughs> so I, I said, I, I, I know we're going to fall between now and the end of the week. That's all I know. And we fell Friday. <laughs> and so, and I told everybody in the room that we were going to break 320 on Friday, but some people got out of the trade before the weekend. But Again, it's, it's, it's doing something for a very, 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 very long time and nothing else that allows me to see these things and see the moves. But it's the gap rating. It's looking at the price action. So anything that you could do to give you an edge in the market will help you. We do go long, though. I have no problem going long. We've gone long more in the last month than I can even tell you when. But we didn't go on the market. We didn't go on the market. Um, what else was I going to say? I was going to say something and I forgot. Any other questions? You need to do something that also works in a consistent consistently in any market environment. So therefore, again, if you're going long pullbacks, that's great if the market's very bullish. You're gonna still lose in some trades. But you know, theoretically, if you went long in 2021, the market made a lot of brand new all-time highs. Buying pullbacks worked an awful lot. Still didn't work all year, but it worked a lot. You, that's not normal market conditions all the time, okay? Even in when the market's in an uptrend, for example, it's not always such a strong uptrend that you could go long every pullback even still. Because we've had, you know, umpteen bullish years in the last several years anyways, and you still couldn't have gone long every pullback and made money. The reality is that you have to find a strategy that you use that's consistent. People get upset and they get angry at different things that they learn when they don't work and they lose money and then they get frustrated and then they say the market's rigged and it's this that and the other thing and whatever many times people are just doing stuff that just flat out doesn't work now you might have taken advice from someone or done a class or believed someone that told you that something that was going to work so you thought it was going to work and then you felt gypped like oh i thought this was going to work and it really didn't work but if you thought about it common sense wise and go back and think about the common sense, you probably will realize that it wasn't really going to work anyways. And you probably should have never believed it was going to work, if that makes any sense. Do you know what I mean? Uh, let me try to find a good example here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use, I'm just going to go to this, I'm going to use one of these Reddit stocks to, to, to make my point about that. Here, this is to download. It's like everybody said, oh, you can make all this money if you go long, you know, these Reddit stocks. So then everybody piled in. But common sense says, you know, were these good trades? Yes, some people made a lot of money in these trades. They were in them really early. They were in them super duper early. They helped to pump the stocks, but then they dumped it. Here, this is a good example. So again, this AMC stock that a lot of the Reddit people trade in, theoretically, if you went long here and you got out, when it had this move up, you could have made money. But a lot of people also went long in here late, okay? Then they went long here, then they went long here, Anyways, long story short, where was the last high in this? 72.62, that was a year ago, 
a little bit more, basically, June of 2021. And where's the stock today? Here, it's at 1046. So you might, you know, if you bought this, you might have said, oh, God, I got taken in this and boom, ba doom, ba doom. It, it was never really good long, in my opinion. But theoretically, some people did make money going long this that had an early entry and a fast exit. It was not a good trade. And you could say this about really all these things. What was the one that everybody was talking about in news last week? Was it the BBBY? Let's see what that did today. Am I making my point here? And again, what's the strategy with the rented stocks? You're just, a lot of people are getting together and buying a stock. Again, while sometimes that can work to move it on a day, it's, it's not sustainable to keep going. You have to have constant, constant, constant big buying coming in to sustain it. So you can have a lot of people pile in one day and then it flatlines, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, look at this. So look at what that did since all that scuttlebutt of the last week that some guy did, you know, options trades who had a huge amount of money to begin with and could have lost every dime and not been poor. And he sold out of it. And then everybody piled into it and bought it the second day. How do I know? It gapped up here the day after this big move. It gapped up. And then it fell ever since. Look. And look where it is today. So anybody that did that can't say, oh my God, I got sucked into this. No, it was a bad trade. Many times when people lose money, they are in fact bad trades. The market isn't rigged against you. The market doesn't even know your name. There's no, like many times people just do things because they're so desperate, desperate to make money that they do things that are dumb, quite frankly, or don't make any sense. But you don't have to do things that don't make any sense. You can make money in the market by doing things that do make sense, but you absolutely have to know what those things are. And, you know, for me, it's gaps, but it is the way that I'm looking at it, making the predictions of where it's going to go. But it's all everything that I look at that happens in the pre-market and the post-market. Now, as far as the post-market here tonight, where are we? Well, we are up slightly here tonight. We're trading roughly around 315.03. We closed today at 314.29-ish. So we're up about, you know, 70 some cents tonight. I have no idea where we'll be tomorrow, but just, you know, showing you here in the chart. That's where we are right now. Right about there, snug as a bug. See where we close, see where we are. Any other questions from anyone? I was gonna say something else, I think I forget. Just talking about the Reddit stocks. Anyways, I think that the last 24 to 48 hours is an indication, if of nothing else, not necessarily that the market's lower, even though it might be. Again, I don't know if we break the June 16th lows or not. I don't care either way. It, could it happen? Yes. Is it set 100% going to happen? No. Do a lot of people think there's no chance it's going to happen? Yes. I think that's the wrong conclusion because it could. But the reality is that I think of anything in the last 24 to 48 hours has taught us is that, you know, there's going to be more volatility between now and the end of the year, for sure. Volatility means opportunity to make money, but you have to get the pick right. You have to get the timing right, not just for day trades, but options too. And you got to get the direction right no matter what you do, you just do. So, you know, people thought that we just keep rallying and rallying and rallying and rallying and rallying and rallying and rallying. We're not doing it. That's done. So we could be in for volatility and shop. Again, volatility doesn't always mean selling. Volatility can mean a move to the upside. We could flip tomorrow. 100% retrace this move down today. I don't think that happens, but it could. It could. When the moves come, you've got to make the donuts. 
You have to make the money when the moves are there. When the gaps are there, you play them and play them hard. And you've got to get the move because you don't know when you're going to get it again. It could be nothing tomorrow. I don't know what we're doing. We could have nothing. I don't know. Or we could have 10 things, you know. That's where it's you've got to be on point. And again, many traders are late, 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 late in making decisions what to do, you know, overthink things that they need to do, don't act or act in haste. The better prepared you are in the morning before the market opens, the more money you'll make on the day. The less prepared you are, you're trading on the fly after the open, so you're pretty much setting yourself up to lose. And you don't have anyone to blame but yourself if you're trading like that, because it's not the right thing to do in any market conditions, and particularly not right now. So I'm, my two cents, and I'll, I'll just close it out unless anybody has any other questions here. I don't think the market makes a brand new all-time high before the end of the year. I've been saying that on TV actually for the last few months. I said it, I think in May, April was where I really said it. And that's just not going to happen now. So we're either lower or chop back and forth, move higher, but we don't make a new high. I mean, if you look at where we are and we only have, like again, I said we got one more week basically in September. I mean, in August, since September starts, September, October, November, December, we only have four more months left in the year. This year has just flown by, flown by. It's hard to believe. Any other questions from anybody about anything at all? If you do have any other questions, I'm just gonna put my email in here, you can email me. If you have questions, you can email me here. If you are interested in the Golden Gap class, email me there. If you're interested in the options newsletter, email me there. If you are interested in a trial to the trading room, email me there. Some of you are new, and some of you are recognizing you've been following me for a little bit, and some of you have been following me for so long. I recognize some of you that are following me for, I think, since I started the business, which was 10 years ago. I, I have to say, I think some of you that are following me for 10 years, if your plan of action is to follow me for another 10 years and never take my class, I can't promise you I will be running my business for in 10 years from now. Eventually, I'm going to get married. Eventually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fall in love with someone. And eventually, you know, I'm going to do something different with my life. I think it's really great that people are following me for a long time, but I think some of you are really going to end up missing out never joining but you can email me if you have questions and that's the scoop good luck everybody you're welcome